All right, uh, so we've got more of the shapes blocked in. Uh, now we can start rendering details, trees. Uh, by the way, I'll do a separate tutorial on how to render trees uh, in a little bit. Uh, in this image, all we have is cypress, which is somewhat limited. Uh, let's talk about the tower. Everybody, uh, do not be afraid to use the ruler when you're shading. So for instance, uh, if you need to get a sharp corner, absolutely, this is okay. Not okay when you're freehanding, obviously, but if you want to preserve the sharpness of your corner, absolutely use your ruler. Ultimately, this is gonna be a question of style, how accurate you want your drawing to be, how sharp. Uh, there are plenty of artists that do this freehand, perfectly legitimate. It'll give you a slightly more expressive, personal looking result. Uh, if you're doing architectural rendering, uh, you're going to use a ruler, which is going to make the drawing feel more accurate, but also perhaps less expressive, more mechanical. Um, also good. So it all really depends on your intentions. For this exercise, I want you to use a ruler as much as possible. Uh, we're learning how to do this. And to learn, we need to be as accurate as we can be. Um, now, I'm still eyeballing quite a lot, right? Uh, so I'm making calculations where it's convenient, where it starts getting inconvenient, I'm eyeballing, right? Um, I'm thinking about the principal's atmospheric pers perspective, though. Uh, there, I need to be perfectly accurate. So when we're rendering out our two columns, Really, even here, the shadow on this column is going to go a little bit lighter than the shadow on this column to reinforce the sense of depth. Um, this thing is very, very complicated. Uh, we've got lots of complicated architectural ornament. Uh, I'm not sure I'm getting it all entirely right. Um, I'm a little bit off here and there. But look, uh, really, in order for me to get this entirely right, I'd be sitting here for hours and hours and hours, and that is something I definitely do not have at the moment. So uh, this tutorial is a little bit rushed for the degree of complexity of this image, but hopefully you guys get the right idea from it. Um, you start understanding the concepts that were covered, and you spend more time on your homework assignments. Um, now, level of complexity in the images you choose is really up to you. So this image is relatively simple, uh, if you think about it. Uh, if I was to render a Gothic cathedral with all the flying buttresses, uh, that would be considerably more difficult. There's a little bit of complication in that these two towers aren't perfectly aligned in terms of perspective, but all really manageable. And the textures here are going to be pretty easy to render, which is obviously not always the case. Uh, what else can I do? Well, um, the upper roof, this part right here, is mostly in shadow. Let's do that. I find these carbon pencils to be a little better for this architectural work. Um, they draw a sharper line. And also, uh, when I blend my values on top, the lines underneath don't completely rub out. Uh, which can be the case with charcoal. Uh, that can be a little bit frustrating, constantly being forced to redraw your lines. That said, some of these construction lines, sometimes, if they're too dark, have a hard time disappearing, right? Always a trade-off in the art world, right, when it comes to materials. Okay, so it's going a little bit darker here. By the way, as I'm fully aware, uh, there are a few little tiny mistakes in this drawing. Um, actually, I'm, I don't know if I mentioned this, I made a slight mistake at the very beginning uh, when I placed my horizon line. I placed it a little bit too high, and I only noticed that when it came time to drawing this building. So, uh, I sneakily changed it in between shots, um, but just so you guys realize I'm not trying to get away with anything. Um, wasn't really trying to be sneaky, I just made a mistake. and. Just so I didn't have to do the demo completely over, I decided to just move it a little bit. Okay. All right, uh, let's get a little more contrast on this tower. Um, just looking at the contrast of the shadow side with the sky. I noticed the shadow is going a little bit darker, going this way. 
Look, for this, use more of the paper towel. Don't use your chamois. At this point, the chamois is going to just start lifting off. Okay, so we have this image more or less blocked in. Uh, now it's time to start doing a little bit of detailing. Um, we're going to start rendering some of the textures that we're seeing here in the bricks and the leaves here. I don't know if cypress trees can technically be considered to have leaves, but that's a discussion for a different class. Um, let's start with the foreground and start getting the brick texture here. Now you can really start anywhere. Uh, so once you've got things blocked in, background to foreground, big to small, start anywhere you want. Pay attention to atmospheric perspective. So here, the shadows, the very darkest values, need to be very, very strong and crispy. So when I start doing the brick texture, I notice that it follows the rules of perspective for the most part. Uh, we've got a row of bricks here, going this way, like this. And we have a shadow here. It's going to be a little bit lighter here, and it's going to go darker here. Notice I'm moving my ruler down a little bit to create the shadow. And now I can start going in and breaking up that line a little bit to get it to look brick-like, antique. Here, we're going to have some of our darkest lines, our very, very darkest shadows. As we're going back in space, we're still going to keep it dark because this pool is really close to us. But we need to diminish the texture a little bit this way, like this. So it actually looks like it's going back in space. All right, uh, so here the brickwork becomes a little bit more sloppy, um, rusticated. Uh, the bricks still follow these um, perspective lines, however. So we're going to draw them in so that it guides us in getting this row of these rows of rough stones. They're going to be different sizes, obviously. Okay, bottom row. Okay, uh, I think that's good enough. Okay, so here is our first row of stones. Again, make sure that the shadows here go really, really dark. This is a 4B pencil. Well, uh, if I have it, I'll switch to my 6B. What is this? Ah, I've got a 6B. Excellent. Okay, I can start going darker here. This way. Like this. Uh, we've got another row here. Okay, nothing particularly difficult about the bricks here. Just make sure they go really, really dark here. Uh, now, we've got some texture here too. Right? Uh, that might be a texture that kind of looks like this. Um, we still want to make sure that this area is light and that the cast shadow here goes pretty dark, pretty sharp. Okay. Now, at this stage, you can start erasing out as well. Now, we have a relatively light piece of paper. Um, you don't need to erase a lot, uh, simply because there's not a lot of pure white here. But you can start doing stuff like this. Okay, I can erase the front of the pool here. I'm using my kneaded eraser. Um, I don't know if I have my harder erasers anywhere. Um, okay, I'll have to go get them, stop the video. So I'm just going to keep doing this for right now. Like that. <clears throat> now, when it comes to dealing with the texture of the brickworks back here, we also need to establish or re-establish our perspective grid going back this way. Keep it light. Okay, I'm not going to continue. I'm going to bore you guys to death. Uh, let's do the same thing here. This way, keep it really light. Hopefully this will disappear once we start putting in the detail. Don't forget to flatten out the lines as you're going back in space. Flatter and flatter and flatter. And then we're going to start introducing a little bit of the brick texture. Keep it a little bit stronger here, this way. 
and then every once in a while introduce a dark brick. Here's a dark brick. Here's a dark brick. Uh, you don't have to count bricks. Though if you want to, you can. That's really up to you. That's between you and your obsessive compulsive issues. Um, however, you'll find that sometimes, quite often actually, by suggesting detail, you'll get something that looks more realistic than something that is fully, completely rendered out. Now, there are also going to be some parts where the bricks are a little bit lighter. So you can use your kneaded eraser, or actually my eraser holder, to erase out some of the texture. Just make sure that you keep following the perspective lines. We've got bricks here. They're going back in space this way. right? So long as you're following the perspective lines, things are going to look brick-like. They're going to look like some kind of architectural detail as opposed to a mistake. Uh, here, same thing, right? So I'm going to go in, introduce a little bit of the brick texture. Don't forget to diminish the size of the bricks as you're going back in space, right? A little stronger here, a little stronger here, and then every once in a while introduce a darker brick. Darker brick, darker brick, darker brick, darker brick, and also some bricks that are a little bit lighter. When it comes to the texture on the tower back here, make it considerably, considerably softer. So we're going to smooth out the texture here. I'm going to lose my arches again. Hopefully I don't. All right. Um, it might help to reintroduce perspective lines, but really all I need to do is hold my pencil a little more sideways and just suggest the fact that we're dealing with something that is more brick-like this way. On this side, maybe instead of putting darker lines in like I'm doing, I might just erase out a little bit. So have a little bit of, let's use a slightly smaller eraser here, All right? Just to suggest that we're dealing with something that has rows to it. Uh, that's gonna give the impression of brickwork. So there are gonna be some places where you erase, but because you're starting with a lighter piece of paper, there's not gonna be that many areas. Let's give this a little bit of a stronger sense around this like this. Uh, we need a core shadow, reflected light. We're dealing with a cylinder after all. Okay, now let's talk about organic textures, how to render trees, grass, all that kind of stuff. All right, uh, let's start off with this central cypress tree. We already have the general local value. We have the general value of the shadow. Let's go just a little bit darker here, which means I'm going to have to go a little bit darker everywhere else. Now let's start getting the actual texture. Here's how it's done. Use the side of your pencil. And in this case, I'm going to create kind of a curly stroke that looks like this. Cypress trees don't really have leaves. They don't. Right, uh, they have, I guess, fronds. I don't know what the technical term for it is. They kind of look like this. On this side, we have some places that are a little bit in shadow, going like this. They come out a little bit. And we have a little bit more regular shadow here, like this. And then notice that the light break starts going in this way, running this way, that's going to give a sense of an irregular shape on the inside of the form. So this is the case when you have anything with a really complicated texture. Simplify at the beginning, and then go back in and get specific about the light breaks. Now, uh, right now the contrast is off because some of our darkest darks are now here. <coughs> <clears throat> That's not an issue because we're going to start going even darker here. And look, you always have the option to lighten. I can always run a kneaded eraser against this and knock off a little bit of value. So this is reduction technique. It's flexible. Don't worry about going too dark. 
we can always make adjustments to the atmospheric perspective, to the sense of depth after the fact. <coughs> okay. Let's add a little bit of texture here. Now notice I'm not getting the shape exactly right. I don't need to. I just need to get the general character of the tree. I'm not counting leaves. That's impossible. All right, and now we can erase out a little bit. There might be some places where the fronds, I'm just gonna say fronds, go a little bit brighter. Okay, so there's the eucalyptus tree. Uh, did I say eucalyptus? Cypress tree, excuse me. Um, you can be a little bit linear, maybe introduce a little bit sharper texture here and there. All right, so I'm going in, putting in a little bit of detail work. Look, uh, this is something I'd probably be doing way towards the end. Um, the most important thing is as the trees come closer, the texture needs to increase and needs to get a little bit darker in the shadows. So when I'm drawing this tree, I'm gonna go considerably darker. Again, think in layers, right? One layer, another layer, another layer, another layer. Let's blend this out a little bit. So I'm already starting off with a darker shadow than we have here. That's gonna give the impression that this tree is closer, this tree is closer than this tree. Now, cypress trees are easy. Um, I'm going to give you a demo on slightly more complicated tree textures in a while. Uh, let me finish this drawing first. Um, I'm going to speed this up, start working everywhere, and then hopefully in a little bit you should be able to see the finished product. Um, okay, now let's start going in and putting in some of the texture on the side. Notice I'm making it larger. I'm making the strokes larger, a little bit darker. The detailing here is a little bit stronger. I'm trying to be as consistent about atmospheric perspective as possible. Because, really, uh, if the atmospheric perspective is off, no amount of correct linear perspective will save your drawing. Conversely, uh, if you've got really good, strong, consistent atmospheric perspective, people won't mind your perspective mistakes, your linear perspective mistakes quite as much. Now, if they're egregious, you're gonna have a problem. Uh, but if some things are a little bit inconsistent, the drawing will still be really convincing in terms of depth. Atmospheric is more important. Atmospheric perspective is more important than linear perspective in many respects. Um, and look, you'll see lots and lots of art. Uh, look, Van Gogh, uh, some of the painters that were working in kind of a deliberately naive style. Um, did very successful art, even though they were ignoring the rules of perspective. They weren't necessarily following it all the time. All right, guys, I worked on this drawing a little bit more. Uh, there's a little more detail there. Um, I think this is just about as far as I'm going to take this drawing. Um, really, the next step is to put in our texture, put in our detail. Um, I think you guys have the right idea. Again, pay attention to not only linear perspective, but most importantly, atmospheric perspective. I was trying to be fairly careful here. Uh, our strongest contrast. Our strongest textures is towards the foreground, so my darkest band of darks, darkest band of darks, uh, is here towards the foreground, and then even a couple of feet away, I tried to make the darks a little bit weaker. And if you can see this row of trees, I tried to be consistent that as the trees went back in space, the darkest darks, the line quality, got lighter and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner, and that gave me a stronger sense of depth than actually exists in the final image. Um, look, this applies with all textures. Uh, so obviously I'm not done here, but if I take these bricks back, 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 I wanna make sure that the brick texture here gets softer, lighter, even as it goes back this way, right? Um, 
Okay, so that's it for now. Um, I might do a separate demo on rendering different kinds of trees, uh, but look, this is a lot of information already. Um, really, you should be focusing on atmospheric perspective, making sure that the textures properly recede back in space. Um, maybe when it comes to tree texture, uh, we'll move it to the following week when we start doing ink washes. Um, I think that'll probably be a better time to do it. We'll have more time to focus on that kind of stuff. Okay, so again, that's it for now. Here's the image. Um, that's it.